What is up, party people? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video, I want to teach you why Radical Piano in Reason is actually pretty darn good, and why, if you're using Reason, it should be your go-to piano. It's way better than using the NNXT for the piano sounds, and it can get you some pretty nice sounds. To be honest, I think it is a good enough piano. Like You wouldn't need to get a VST or upgrade it unless you're doing really intimate style classical music and you want more emphasis. So what I'm going to do is walk you through how to use the Radical Piano and give you some sound design ideas so you can fully unlock the power of this beautiful Reason device. Before we go farther though, I do want to let you know I've got a free Reason cheat sheet. It describes all of the instruments and effects in Reason so that you can quickly figure out what you should be using and what you should not be using based on the type of music that you enjoy making. So there's a link down below to download that free cheat sheet. Please be sure to check it out if you need help figuring out where to go with Reason and don't forget to like and subscribe. So now let's look into this radical piano. I've got my keyboard down here off screen. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So that sounds pretty good. That's just the stock setting. Uh, so let's start with the top part and we'll move left to right. So this is actually one of my favorite parts right here the character section and what this does is it can let you quickly go from like a mellow sound to an agitated sound or like from something that might be better for i don't know dreamy like uh not lounge music but like meditation music all the way to like honky tonk hard rock so let's listen now on subdued And now if we go to Agitated. All right, now that's a little too hard there. That starts to sound like a harpsichord. But if you roll it back a little bit. You can see how in the sweet spots here, this provides a lot of tonal flexibility. And if you want it to sound like a harpsichord then. do that as well. Next up, we've got the microphone choices. So along the top, you have three different pianos to choose from. A home grand piano, a deluxe grand piano, and an upright piano. And then you'll see there are up to five different microphone choices to choose from. So on the home grand, you only get to choose from a jazz miking and a close miking setup. On the deluxe grand and on the upright, you also get to choose from a floor miking technique, an ambient miking technique, and the vintage mono technique. This knob here blends between the two. So like, let's say you want partly your upright piano to be close miked, and then you want a bit of ambience on it. If we just wanted all of the ambience, And if we wanted all the close mic, we'd bring it all the way to the other side. And then obviously you can blend to taste. And all these mics really do have a slightly different character to them. I recommend experimenting with them. Uh, you can really get a lot of tone shaping. And these are the first two sections that I would use to dial in my tone. You can also choose your presets here and adjust the volume to gain stage and all of that. But for the purposes of this, we'll go with a uh, deluxe grand and on the main side, we'll do jazz miking and then we'll do uh, some floor miking. So let's just listen. There you have it. 
<laughs> but let's get to the more important stuff. All these juicy bits down below. This is where you can really kind of start to dial in your tone. So first you have separate velocity responses for the high and the lows. Basically, you can make it so that I'm just going to kind of hold things steady right now. I'm going to try and play. Basically that, the velocity response determines how sensitive the piano is to how hard you're playing, how much velocity you're playing with. So at zero sensitivity, all the way on the left, I'm playing really hard right now, and I'm playing soft, and it's all the same. If we go all the way up to the right, that's soft, that's hard. Uh, and so this can be really helpful, like, especially if you're not as talented at piano like me, where, you know, you want maybe your left hand to be pretty consistent, but your right hand to be more dynamic. And you can also affect the velocity curve. So that as the sound quickly build up, or does it slowly build up? Basically, this is kind of character, but with a little more precision. And now let's try that same. Next section, you can just adjust the overall tuning if you need your piano to be tuned differently. Or if you're looking for more of a honky-tonk type sound, you can do the drift. So you'll notice the pitch will just start to go up and down, kind of. And if we go even higher, it starts to be wonky. So you can get that lo-fi vintage tone really easily just built in. Next, you have the option to, I've got a, I'm gonna be pressing my foot pedal down right now. That turns the sustain on. I took my foot off, sustain is off, but you can also manually kind of have it in between. I'm not touching the pedal now, I've just set it there. Or you can set it all the way up. Uh, and so if you don't have a foot pedal handy, you can use this, or you can automate it. You could, you know, map it to one of your mod wheels, whatever. Resonance is kind of the overtones of the piano. So if we hold down a chord with a more resonance level, you kind of hear those uh, harmonics almost. And we'll add a long release time. short release time and now with a they're pretty dead and so this can just kind of bring a little more life and especially with sustain So it really, you do need the sustain pedal to really hear all of it, but. We'll just get it at a more natural level. Envelope is just how kind of, again, attack and release the decay curve. So how long it takes to fade out, how sharply it comes on and kind of how long it releases. So let's. It's kind of the opposite of the velocity response, so. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to play one chord and we'll let it ring out with the maximum decay curve and release time, you'll hear. That's almost like a pad and that was like really unnatural. And it's still actually sustaining, by the way. Um, that is much more natural. Um, and you, so you can, you know, within reason, like again, like I said, and I don't mean reason, but 
all of these settings sound really good when they're not extreme. You know, 15 to 20 percent off center it gets you really good results that let you dial in a beautiful piano sound. So this is the same with shorter decay and release. And we'll turn the attack down. So that means it starts right away. This is just an ADSR curve or an ADR curve. But that's too short there. That doesn't sound natural. And we could bring the attack up. Within reason, again. It sounds like a softer piano, but on the harder ends, it doesn't necessarily sound like a real piano, but it could make the good basis for a pad. And if we bring it all the way up, oh, come on. So it's just about flexibility, and it's just one of the things that makes it cool. The last really important section we have here is the mechanics. So the sound, like this is modeling the physical sound of the key on a piano. It actually makes noise when it goes down, and it makes noise when it goes up, and a pedal also makes noise when it goes up and down. If you played a really crummy old piano, you've definitely heard this, but even on a nice piano, it's going to make noise. So let's just crank the key down and key up, and I will just... And now let's turn it all the way down. And the opposite. Again, super useful sounds for customiz customization. There are songs where these sounds could be right. And then just, let's, uh, you probably will not be able to hear the pedal going down. You're probably hearing, the microphone is probably more likely to be picking up my foot than this noise, but it is a subtle and real thing that a piano has, so. Finally, you've got three sections that are pretty typical of anything. An EQ with mid, high, and low fixed bands, but set to where you need them to be for a piano. You can turn it on or off. You've got ambience with four reverbs built in. I want to see your hall and theater. Finally, built-in compression and stereo width. When it comes to me, I tend to prefer outboard reverb effects, like compression and EQ, things like that. It just gives you a lot more control, uh, but especially since you're using this within reason and there's you know, better compressors and there's better reverbs and EQs that have more flexibility. I generally don't use the onboard effects. They sound fine, um, but the rest of the tools built into Radical Piano sound really good. And I hope this video kind of convinced you to give it a shot. Like I said, there's that free reason cheat sheet so you can download it, figure out what other instruments maybe you've missed out on. But before we go, let's just take a look at the back. It's a pretty standard um, back panel for a Reason device. You can put additional audio in. So let's say you had a loop and you could just run it through some of these onboard effects, specifically the resonance, EQ, ambience, and compression. Uh, and you could also modulate the pitch or the master volume with CV uh, and control everything with the sequencer. So nothing too crazy there, but still worth knowing. And 
with that, I hope you had a have a fantastic day. Hope you learned something. Don't be forget to like and subscribe. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.